everyone, Chris Turnett here for Card Player TV, bringing you an update of the 2009 World Series of Poker. We've got three events playing down to a final table today. And they include event number four, the $1,000 buy-in Nolan Maholdem tournament. It attracted 6,012 players and we're now down to around 50. First place is taking home $771,000. Event number five, the $1,500 buy-in Omaha Eight or Better tournament, has around 80 players of the 809 that started, and first place is $237,000. Event number six, the $10,000 buy-in World Championship Seven Card Stud event, is also playing down to a final table. There are around 100 players out of the 142 that started, and first place is $374,000. The two events that started today are event number 7, the $1,500 buy-in No Limit Hold'em tournament, and event number 8, the $2,500 buy-in No Limit Deuce to 7 Draw Low Ball event. The inaugural World Series of Poker Champions Invitational ended last night, and Tom McAvoy is your winner. We caught up with him earlier today. Alright Tom, you entered the final table second in chips. How did the final table play go? Did you continue to just build, or did you ever kind of have some obstacles? Well, there's always uh, obstacles on the way to victory, <laughs> and uh, Carlos Mortensen um, had a pretty good stack um, at 31. He had almost 45, so he was quite a bit ahead of me, and I knew he'd come out firing with both barrels, and there's only one winner in this thing, you know, so I wasn't uh, trying to avoid him this mm -hmm. time. And I was fortunate, I went two pots off of him real early, and now I took the lead right away. He made comebacks, but he was kind of the player I was watching the most until mm -hmm. he went out finally in fifth place. Um, I had a lot of fun because I busted Doyle along the way. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, always exciting, you know, to, you know, everybody shoots for the man, you know. I'm the and one that got him this time. Mm -hmm. um, I actually broke uh, five players in the turn all together. I, I broke Scotty Wynn on the first day and I broke four players uh, at the final table. And, uh, besides Doyle, I broke uh, Jim Bechtel who came in uh, fourth, Dan Arrington who came in third, and Robert Verconi who came in second. So I had a pretty good run along the way. Um, Dan Harrington and I were kind of trading the chip lead there for a while mm -hmm. and then he just kind of lost a whole series of pots towards the end, uh, both to me and Varconi, and uh, that was uh, the end for him. We talked before the final table, and you said that you guaranteed you wanted to win this more than anyone else. Did you see it in any anybody else's eyes that they wanted it as much as you, or did you still, no. that was your number one? I felt that all along, and I said it in all the other interviews, too, I said, I guarantee even that there's nobody wants it more than me. <clears throat> Although I did say the guy who probably wants it the second most is Varconi mm -hmm. because he doesn't get as much respect as he deserves. And he's a very underrated player mm -hmm. and I felt that, um, you know, he felt he had something to prove too. Um, you know, I've, I've had a long, very successful career and I won many tournaments over the years, but I haven't won as many uh, lately, obviously, as uh, I'd like to. And, um, I felt like I really needed to kind of reestablish myself that I could play at my advanced stage <laughs> <laughs> at a very high level. And there was three guys older than me. <laughs> and uh, of those three older than me, two of them were at the last table, mm -hmm. Doyle and Barry Johnston. What do you think it was the last couple of years? Have you been playing as much as you did before? Or do you think that now you have maybe evolved your play, ch like changed with the game? What do you think it is? Well, I um, used to play uh, a lot more extensively on the tournament circuit and travel a lot more. Mm -hmm. I travel less, and so I actually am playing fewer tournaments in brick and mortar casinos, but I play a lot online. Mm -hmm. I'm used to playing with these online hot shots because, okay. you know, I like to say it IR one. You know, I, I play online <laughs> all the time, so I'm used to that style of play, and I'm a constant student of the game. So I have studied and studied and studied my whole life to try to improve my game. And, um, and I try to learn from the young players as well as the older players. But if you took a look at the, the last players there, um, it was definitely an older crowd <laughs> <laughs> dominated. <laughs> All right, well, now just a question. I mean, you've been playing for the last two and a half decades. You've been to the World Series for a number of years. 
Did you ever think that it was going to be these kinds of numbers? No, no one could have imagined what this uh, World Series turned into. I always thought it would continue to grow and get bigger, mm -hmm. but it took the internet and the uh, you know whole card camera, mm -hmm. where people could see the cards and identify with the players and their strategies before it really exploded. So it was a combination of television and the internet and uh, just every sport, and this is a mental sport, not a physical sport necessarily, but um, needs new blood and there's mm -hmm. just tons and tons of new people coming in over. And they're not all young kids either, you know, a lot of older players are coming in for the first time. So it's a one nice thing about poker is that there's no restrictions on age or gender. <laughs> it doesn't mm -hmm. matter how young or old you are, if you apply yourself and get a little lucky, you can win. When you first became a professional, was there, how, how does it feel now that you, you probably had to deal with a lot of stigma and a lot of public uh, opinion about you being a professional gambler? And now these days, it's becoming more accepted. Do you think that we've gotten to the point where poker is accepted, or do you think there's still more work to be done? Well, I think it's pretty well generally accepted now. <laughs> um, by the way, I'm not a professional gambler. I'm a professional poker player. There's a big difference because I leave all these other games alone. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of poker players that don't, mm -hmm. and I guess maybe technically you could qualify them as gamblers, but. Poker can be beat if you're good enough, and that's where I apply my skills. I don't try to beat the house, you know, in mm -hmm. the, in the, you know, roulette and blackjack and so forth. Well, I like the little blackjack once in a while. I'm like a ten dollar better, and I only play a few times a year. But um, it's poker with me, and I never would have imagined how big this thing has gotten. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no end in sight. You know, the economy is bad. And you'd think there'd be fewer players here, and we're record numbers already. It's like, where are all these people coming from? <laughs> <laughs> where do they come from, and where do they get the money? <laughs> but they're here, and the whole army of them yep. <laughs> from all over the world. So what's next for Tom McAvoy? Well, I don't get to play again till tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be my, my actually my first... Uh, paid World Series buy-in event because the tournament one was the Invitational mm -hmm. and I deliberately skipped the first few events just so I would be rested and fresh and ready for it because I, you know, I told you I took it dead serious right from the beginning mm -hmm. and I really, really wanted to win this thing. I, I, I've told you but it's like I wanted it so bad <laughs> I just had to go out and take it. It's great that it came to fruition. Yeah, it did. For me, maybe not for the other guys who wanted it to. <laughs> but it worked out for me, for sure. All right. Well, good luck in that next Thank event. You. Hopefully, we'll talk to you again. All right. Hope so. Christian Nett with Tom McAvoy for Cardinal TV.